coming to you um, on Facebook as we continue in this time of uh, social distancing, but we are here um, this morning ready and um, excited to just continue to offer uh, God praise and worship through this time. We know this is a, a very difficult time for many people, but we also know that God is still God and God is in control. And even though things around us are uncertain and we are um, in, in times that we aren't used to, we can trust in the fact that God is in control. We have to take the news um, for what it is. And a lot of times the news is, you know, giving us um, the data and, and sometimes the news is giving us, um, putting us in places of fear. And so we kind of have to take the news for what it is, but we have to recognize um, that we have the good news. And the good news of Jesus Christ is the news that we should be focusing on so that we don't find ourselves giving in to fear and allowing fear to control us. We have to trust and believe in the God that we serve. We trust him when things are going good, but we have to trust him when things aren't going the way we think they should go and that we understand. We can trust him because he is God and he is God alone. And so we want to just encourage you to continue to trust in God, to continue to offer him praise and worship at this time, to continue to um, look out for each other, continue to pray for each other and see how um, we can be of assistance to each other in this time. Amen. We are going to um, call up Deacon Bumpus to lead us into prayer this morning as we um, get ready to go into our service today. Amen. Father God, we just come today just to say thank you, God. Father, we just want to say thank you for all that you do, all that you continue to do. Oh God, we come, oh God, in a time of difficulties, oh God. But oh God, I know that you're able, oh God, to do all things. Because you are our creator, God. You created everything on this earth, oh God. And I know, Father God, that you are in control of every situation. So, Father God, I just want to say thank you today. I want to say thank you today, Father. For you are so worthy to be praised, God. And I come just to lift you up today, God. Some with heavy burdens, oh God. But, oh God, I know that you are able to move all those burdens, Father God. Oh, I thank you today, God. For being our Jehovah Jireh, oh God. For being our provider, oh God. Oh God, you provide for us when we are in need, oh God. So I thank you, oh God. You will never let us go without, Father God. Oh, glory to God today. Hallelujah. I lift you up. For you said if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So God, I'm lifting you up today. We need you today, oh God. We are so glad that you would just walk through this community, oh God. Heavenly Father, touch those that don't know you today, oh God. Oh God, that they will hear you, oh God, and move, oh God, and come to you, oh God. For we need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I praise your name, Father God. Thank you for being Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Oh God, we know that you can heal, oh God. So God, we just ask that we will come together and humble ourselves and pray, oh God. You said, and seek you, God, that you would heal this land. 
for he is so worthy because he is the great I am. He's a wonderful counselor. He's the prince of peace. He is our strong tower, our way maker, our shield and our buckler. He is our joy. Hallelujah. He is the am, I am that I am.
right? Forever. I believe that's a promise that that God has given us. Yes. He's saying that he's going to love us forever. Amen. And he's going to be committed to us yeah. forever. Yeah, God. No matter what comes, his commitment is sure. Yes, yes. That song, Standing on the Promises hey. yes. of Christ, my King. Standing on his promises. Because right now, with all of the uncertainty that's going on in this world, the only thing that we have right now are the promises that God has yes, given God. us. Yes, God. Yes, God. You have all, you have all of the scientists and all of the experts and everybody giving you different information, different data. Yes. But I know of one yes. that his word supersedes all hey, words. Hey, hey. Yes. And that his word is the word. Yes. And his word don't change. Yes, despite the data, despite the situation, despite the circumstances, despite whatever is going on outside of us. Mm. He's committed to you and I. Father, we thank you for your commitment to us. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Father, even in these times of uncertainty, the Father, we know there is certainty, though, in your word. As we stand with you in your word, as we rest on in and with your word, Father, we pray on this day, now that as your word goes forth, the Lord, that it will comfort someone, it will encourage someone on this day. Gird us now with your holy armor. Cover us with your favor as a protective shield. Then, Father, we pray that you will deliver us from the hand of the enemy and then surround us, Father, with your presence as that protective shield in our life against all hurt, harm, and danger that might try to come our way. Dispatch your angels now to stand guard and set watch over us because that is your promise that you will dispatch angels alongside of us say thank you. And I pray, Father, we can receive your word and preach your word under the anointing of your Holy Spirit on this day. In Jesus' precious name we do pray. And all the people of God said together, amen. 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 Welcome one more time, amen, to our uh, online um, services here at Zoe Outreach Ministries. I'm just getting my notes together so I'll make sure I don't forget anything in this town around. Um, Thank you for coming and sharing with us on this day. Um, it is our prayer that something that is said here today, that have been saying, um, that have been prayed, that will help you, that will enlighten and encourage you to continue on, amen, in the Lord. Let me thank all of you on in social media land uh, for joining us on this day. Uh, and uh, again, I am I'm getting I'm getting more and more comfortable with this. I don't know if that's a good thing or if that's a bad thing. Uh, amen. Um, but I, I want to also say that um, we we're praying for all of those who have been ill or who have lost loved ones, even due to this COVID nineteen. But even for those individuals who um, have been ill with besides just the COVID nineteen, because there's more stuff going on just than COVID nineteen. As a matter of fact. Uh, and so I want to also pray, um, I have to have all Zoe keep praying specifically now for um, Brother Norris, uh, who uh, is uh, the husband to uh, one of our members, uh, Sister Gwen, pray for um, my niece, Sister Melissa, pray for um, uh, Sister Kim uh, and her mom, her mom is also in the hospital right now, pray for her. Um, pray for my brother Cordell, brother Will, as he continues to battle his his illness. Uh, we don't know that he has it, but he's been, you know, he's coming along a whole lot more now. Um, and uh, so, just pray for him. And then we pray for anyone else in our family uh, of Zoe that may have been touched somehow, some way by this thing uh, called COVID nineteen. Remember, I told you that everything that is named under the sun still has to bow to the name. Of Jesus Christ, yeah, Amen. Yeah. So, if you have not done so yet, put Christ on this thing, and yeah. you know, and, and, and begin to walk in Him and walk with Him. Yes. Also, just to be mindful that we are, we will be starting a fast here at Zoe, 
um, at 6 p.m., 1,800 hours for the military-minded people. Uh, and we will fast from 6 p.m. until uh, before service on next Sunday, which is Easter Sunday. Uh, and so, and we have various passages of scripture that I've asked that I've asked uh, people here at Zoe to be, be be mindful of. In that, of course, the main scripture is Psalm. I mean, is Isaiah fifty eight verse six through fourteen about the fast that God has claimed. But then also um, some some psalms of protection that I'm, I'm asking to continue to pray. And then there's Psalm seventeen, Psalm thirty one, Psalm thirty four, Psalm sixty one, Psalm ninety one, Psalm one twenty one. These are all different places. These are all different songs that God talks about protecting and our trusting in Him. And so pray through, read through, um, discuss, and then even um, speak those words into people's lives on this week as you go forward. Um, also remember that our Deacon of the Week is uh, Belinda Askew, and our Minister of the Week is Minister Monique McKnight. Uh, so if there are any issues, please give them a call, and we will be able to um, um, proceed accordingly to make sure that you are still taken care of. I need to say this, though, too. I, I really do miss being able to be in worship with my family. Amen. 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 I, I miss being in worship with the Zoe family. So we're trying some other things. So be you know, so stay tuned. Uh, we, we've been able to develop some Zoom calls, some Zoom meetings with some of the leaders of the deacons, the elders in training. So now my next step is to, is to develop some Zoom meetings for just the people of God to talk to me and I can talk to y'all. So um, be prayerful. If, if you see something coming through your email um, from Zoom, come on Pastor Park Road, don't, don't ignore it. Click it so we can all get together and have a uh, conversation. Amen? Amen. And please, members of Zoe, make sure that you're in contact with your deacon and your deacon is in contact with you, especially throughout this time, so we can remain connected. Amen? Amen. Amen. I will probably be, I will probably announce this once again at the very end if I don't get too carried away with the message uh, to make it and, and forget. So I'll probably announce once again at the end some of these basic uh, announcements. Amen? All right, we're going to go back into the scripture, 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. And in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, um, it's found with the fourth verse. Uh, I, I want to read, as we continue talking about the issue of how to address this whole issue of the COVID-19 uh, from the church's perspective. Um, it says, so Judah gathered to ask help from the Lord, and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, you are, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand, is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? You are, you are not, are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people? of Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, uh, your friend forever. Verse 8, and they dwell in it and have built your you a sanctuary in it for your name. Look at verse 9. If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, remember that name, remember that term, pestilence or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence. For your name is in this temple and we will cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and say. Let's jump down to uh, verse, um, verse, verse 12. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. But our eyes are upon you. Uh, I read all those passages because as Jehoshaphat is addressing the enemy that's coming at him, that has outnumbered him and the people of God. Jehoshaphat has been doing different things, and, and, and I want to use this passage, since I was preaching it anyway during, before all this pandemic stuff hit, I want to remain in this passage because what Jehoshaphat does against this enemy that's coming at him that is numerous, what he does is what we should be doing even right now 
when this invisible enemy is on is on our back and in our backyard. And so even though these are physical bodies, you got to remember something that behind the physical body is a spiritual body that is influencing what you see in the physical realm. Now here it is. What happened? What's happening right now is invisible. We can't see this pandemic. We can't see this, this, this pestilence. We can't see this plague. But this pestilence, this plague, this invisible enemy is all coming against us. And guess what? It is still covered in the Word of God. Yes, yes. And so I want to share with you because there is a hand behind this invisible enemy, but then there are all, there's also a hand behind the hand of this invisible enemy. And the hand behind this invisible enemy is called Satan, but the hand behind that hand is called Elohim, the creator God. And so I want to share a little bit. I, I, was, I, I, I may not even get to this whole point because I, I, I keep hearing you know, and, and I keep seeing, you know, about people who are fearing this thing. And I'm telling you, I'm saying, please do not misunderstand when I tell you. Do not ignore this, the, the, this whole, this thing. But at the same time, do not allow it yeah. to influence and to rule what you do. Yeah. If we are men and women of God then we need to be literally walking in our faith. Yes, yes. And we don't have what, what some people used to call a blind faith. We have what you call an informed yes. faith. Yes. We are informed about how he comes against the pestilence and the plague in song. We are informed about how he dealt with the pestilence and the plague even in Exodus. We are informed how he dealt with the pestilence and the plague even in 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the book of Acts. We are informed how God deals with this. So don't let somebody tell you you have a blind faith. Your faith should be very much informed as to who this God is. So I want to talk about, hopefully, in this next point, we were talking about how you properly recognize the foe. We talked about how you purposely rest in the Father. We talked about how you must pray real and fervently in all of this. But now we're going to talk a little bit about how you proceed regimented in your faith. How you proceed regimented in your faith. Yeah. You cannot have a stagnant faith. As a matter of fact, faith by its nature is not stagnant. I, did, I taught here a while ago um, and here in uh, at Zoe about the different levels of faith. We talked about the initial faith, that's saving faith. Yeah, yeah. But, but then after the saving faith, it, we, we, we talk about then um, uh, the, well, the, the maturing faith. That's more of an intimate faith because you, you, as you grow, as you get closer to God, you mature, but you're more intimate as you mature um, with God. And so we're looking at it, and we, talk, we ought to talk about practical faith, which is that implemented faith. That means that's the faith at work in your life. Yes. See, just being saved is not enough. Because you go from the intellectual now, which you, which you've been is called saving faith. I mean, you go from the initial, which is called saving faith, to the intellectual, which is what you call informed faith, and then you get down to the practical, which we call implemented faith, and then you go even to the growing faith, which is called intimate faith. In other words, your faith is not stagnant, and you must, you must, you must proceed regimented in faith. Now, why did I pick that word regiment? I'm glad you asked that question because that, that word regiment, I had to go back to the Oxford English Dictionary to take a look at that word. And part of that word, it says, it says this, to be regimented means to be ruled or governed with royal authority. I'm saying it again, to be ruled and or governed with royal authority. Right. See, you, if, you, if, you, if you're proceeding in faith, that means that faith is ruling and governing you because of the royal authority it has from God to you. You yeah. missed that right there. Yeah. So if you want to be regimented in faith, you must let your faith, which is royal from God, rule and govern you. You must let the authority 
of God be at work in your life, and if you let the authority of God be at work in your life through intellectual, informed, uh, in, um, uh, implemented, and intimate faith, then you will be able to walk through this thing and not allow this fear to overtake you. Yes, God. Yes, God. I was looking at this um, earlier this week, and I and I looked at that term fear. And, uh, and, and, and and I, I don't know if I'm going to get to this or not. Maybe I'm not supposed to today, but uh, I need to share some because it, 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 as the days go by, I hear more and more you know, how people are getting more and more um, you know, tepid you know, about what's happening uh, or timid about what's happening. And so when I look at this term fear, when he says, even when he says that, that your house has fear to set himself, and, and I had looked up that term, that term fear, and, and here's what I came up with. I have to make sure I write this down so I don't forget it because to me it was very powerful. And that term fear in the Hebrew, it means two different, it means two things. The first thing it means is it means the emotional and intellectual anticipation of harm. Mm -hmm. The emotional, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. emotional yeah. and intellectual yeah. anticipation of harm. It means that you are not just simply thinking about harm coming to you. You are feeling that harm is going to come yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. It's what one feels. What, what, yeah, what one feels may go wrong with him being anxious. So that's the first part. So notice this: that Jehoshaphat he feared. So Jehoshaphat emotionally and intellectually anticipated some harm coming to him. Right. So fear is not, I'm not telling you fear, I'm telling you fear is a real thing. But look at the second part of fear though. The second part says this, it's a <laughs> a very positive feeling of awe or reverence for God. Right. A very positive feeling of awe or reverence for yeah. God. Yeah. Which may be expressed Listen to me. Which may be expressed in our worship. Uh -huh. Oh, you missed that. See, the reality is you're going to have an emotional and intellectual anticipation of harm. You're going to have that because you are you are human. But then you are that's the natural side of you. But then the supernatural takes over because the supernatural says there is a very positive feeling of awe or reverence for God whom you know will get you out of it. So yeah, you can fear on a natural basis, but make sure that you fear with the supernatural. So the supernatural call God, call Elohim, call El Shaddai, call El Elyon, call Jehovah, call Yahweh. Make sure that your worship is with Him. Jehoshaphat feared, and then he set himself. He set himself. To seek the Lord. He didn't run from the fear. He set himself. Yes. And because he set himself, he began to pray. He got regimented and he began to proceed regimented in faith. Yes. Let me help y'all real quickly before I get to this point. And I'll share it with Zona, I'll share it with you again, you know, those of you who are listening. Fear will contaminate your thinking. Yes, it will. Fear will contaminate your heart. Yes, it will. As a matter of fact, fear will contaminate your will. In other words, fear can and will contaminate your soul. And once it contaminates your soul, it spreads even worse and even deeper than this whole COVID-19. As a matter of fact, the fear of COVID-19 is running way more rapid than the actual disease or virus itself because you allow fear to contaminate your soul. And in contaminating your soul, fear then also constrains your soul. It ties you up in knots. It ties you up and it don't want you to move. It constrains you. 
And then after it contaminates you and constrains you, then fear will come and it will cripple you. It will cause you to be handicapped. It will cause you to then look for assistance outside of you. Listen to me. Look for assistance outside of you. When we get crippled or handicapped, we need assistance not from the inside. We need assistance from the outside. There is nothing outside of me that can be able to help me get where I need to go, but, it's, but he's only inside of me. I'm, I, I got, I'm going to hold on to that, that nugget right there, but then it not only does it contaminate, constrain, then it cripples you, but by it crippling you, it begins to control you. Fear controls your thoughts, controls your emotions, controls your will, after it has crippled you, and because it controls you, then fear then commands you. Yes, it does. Fear commands you to do what thus says fear, hmm. not what thus says God. All right. All right. So you walk in fear, it will contaminate, it will constrain, it will cripple, it will control, and it will ultimately command you. And when fear commands you, it commands you away from what God has told you to do. But faith, faith, you must be regimented in faith. What faith does is, faith brings God's presence. Yes. Okay? And, you know, you heard me say that, you know, faith, you know, um, you know the old spirit faith and stuff, the things, hope for, and evidence of things not seen, we know all that. But as Dr. Evans said, Dr. 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 Tony Evans says, that faith is simply acting like God is telling the truth. Really, because he is telling the truth on the matter. Amen. But we won't know that if we're not in his presence. So it, 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 as, as we walk in God's presence, we walk in faith. As we walk in God's peace, we walk in faith. Yeah. In, in Numbers, um, uh, and I, I forget the chapter now, but in Numbers, and I use it as my priestly prayer. He talks about, you know, um, uh, the you know, walking in the in the peace of God. And so what happens is that that peace, that shalom, I, I share it with Zoe as well. I'll share it with you, while, uh, and hopefully you'll get it. You're listening, get it, you know, and, and actually apply it. When we start talking about the shalom of God and numbers, from numbers, uh, and, and I want to say it was number six. I can't remember right now. Um, I mean, I'm in, I got a new Bible, so I probably won't be able to get to it before. Uh, my time starts to expire out here. Um, but in Numbers, somewhere in Numbers, um, oh, there it is, Numbers 6. Here, Numbers 6 chapter, the 22nd through the 26th verse. But in there he says, The Lord bless you, keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In other words, give you his peace, shalom. That sense of peace, that sense of shalom is, 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 when it's, is a gift of God that is only gained in his presence. So you can't have peace outside of God. All right. you, you must have that God. He says, I'm going to give you me in your presence with me. Oh, man. So you, you know how I call it the great, how, how, how grace is the people say the gift of God? I want you to slow it down, slow it down to hear what it means. How grace is the gift of God. In other words, God gifts himself to you yeah. through grace. Yes, yes. God gifts himself to you in grace. So when you get saved, God gifts himself to you. You got that? And by God gifting himself to you, then you can walk out in this peace of God because this peace of God can only be received in the presence of God. But then this peace of God also means that you are blessed by God in his presence. Yeah. And it means that you're not only blessed by God in his presence, but it means that you're also guarded by God in his presence. Right. So you, if God in your presence, it is, the, it is being blessed by God, it is being guarded by God, it is also being, it's also being graciously attended to by God in his presence. So God will graciously attend to you. He will attend to you, to whatever is going on in your life. He will guard you. He will bless you. And he will give him, him he will give himself to you so that you be, so you can be completely fulfilled and complete in him. That's peace. Yes, yes. 
But that peace don't come from outside of you. That peace comes from within you, and it comes from the one who saved you and who now called you unto himself. But that's faith. Faith means they will operate in the presence of God, operate in the peace of God, and then operate on the promises of God, knowing that God is true to his word. And then what has God said to you? Right? Have you spent enough time with him in all of this hell and all of this chaos? Have you spent enough time with God to hear what he says on the matter to you? But it's just not the presence and the peace and the and the, and the, um, and the, uh, the the promises of God. It is also our ability to walk in the power of God. Yes. But we can't walk in God's presence out of God's. Uh, I mean, walk in God's power out of God's presence. Right. Mm. right. See, faith initiated. Faith informed. Faith implemented. Faith. Intimate allows you now to be able to walk in the power, promises, peace, and presence of God. Right. These are not just empty words you need to understand. Yes. God's word is not a word that you just throw away and waste away. Quit listening to everybody outside of you who don't know what God is doing in this matter. It says here, it says, I, I, and I got to go here. I'm not going to get to my point. That's okay. It says here, now, all, it says that, they say that we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you, God. The enemy is coming in at me. We don't know what to do. Our eyes are looking to you. We don't know what to do, God. Our eyes are looking to you. What is your prayer? Don't let all these fake preachers and prophets on TV tell you to run from your worship. What you need to be doing is running to your worship. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. We're in a place right now that God is calling us to pray. God is calling us to himself. When Jehoshaphat sat here, he saw the enemy coming at him. And then, and then it says, and then he stood in the place that God, that his great, great, great grandfather built, Solomon. He stood in the temple. As he stood in the temple in the house of the Lord, he began to look for God and look to God in the presence of the people. And when the people saw him in the temple going to God, then the people said, we got to go to God. And then what he does is he begins to pray. And all he does is, is, he, is, he, is he brings back to remembrance what God had promised his daddy and his daddy's daddy and his daddy's daddy's daddy and his daddy's 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 daddy. Come on, brother daddy. He brings back to God's remembrance. Not that God forgot, but God liked to be reminded of his promises to you and I as we walk in those promises, as we walk in his presence. All the people did here is they stood regimented in their faith and they began to walk, they began to pray in the presence, they began to pray in the promises of God, they began to seek the power of God. Hallelujah. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm not, I don't care about what the world is doing because God is calling the church to pray. Yeah, yes. If my people, which are called by my name, yeah. My people, he says, yes. by my name. Yes. I'm way, I'm way off, I'm way off task. I'm, 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 I'm gonna finish up in a minute. I'm gonna finish up in a minute. So when we look at, when we look at this thing, and we're talking about proceeding, regimented in faith. I know I didn't give you all the, the different points. I, I, want, I want you to understand that. Understand how, how fear operates in your life. But then understand how it should operate in your life. But understand how faith operates in your life. These people, they did not run from the enemy. They didn't run from the enemy. They ran to God. Yes, 
Who are you running to? Turn your TVs off sometime and go to God. And if you have more, go to YouTube and go to a go to a biblically yeah. centered preacher who's going to tell you and show you how to get to this thing. Turn off CNN. Turn off MSNBC. Turn off all that nonsense. And I understand you want to be informed. Please stay informed. But don't let all of the other side talk. Don't let all of the talk get you to a place where you're walking so frightful and so fearful that you cannot give God any glory and give God any praise. God has given us a spirit of power and not one of fear. Here in this passage, y'all, I, I, I gotta go because I'm, I'm it's, 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 over, it's over half an hour already. I gotta, I gotta go, but and I really didn't get to the points that I wanted to make, but but I wanted to share with you because it, it's, it's it's getting so it's getting so it's getting so profound or so profoundly crazy that we are allowing the airwaves to be filled with seeds of negativism, with seeds of man's data, with seeds of destruction and death. I was listening to an interview um, on CNN and, and you know, and, 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 and again, I, I, those of you who know me, you know that I'm a news junkie. But I was listening to it, which really helped me understand to turn that nonsense off. Because one of the co-anchors had gotten, you know, the COVID-19, and, and so, and so, and so, as they were switching, as they were switching um, um, hours, and then you go to the co-anchor, uh, you go to the anchor, um, one of the doctors who come on CNN, you know, first thing he said, are you worried? You know, I mean, you know, you, you, no, you, you should do, you, you should really do this, you should really do that. But none of it, none of it had anything to do with planting a positive seed of life in that man's life. It was all about death, destruction, and darkness. It was all about worry and what, and what Dr. Evans has called um, um, unnecessary, illegitimate worry. You can be concerned. But don't have illegitimate worry in your life as a believer when you know that at the end of the day it is God Himself that will protect you. Yes, yes. So I had to turn it off because it had gotten to a place where it started to just make me fearful. <laughs> and, the, and the reason why is because, because of all of just the, it was so dark. Yes, yes. Because the people of God. Standing up and, and, and sharing the word of life to those who need the word of life. Right now is the time for the people of God to share the word of life in the atmosphere. Put the word in the atmosphere. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That God can save. Yes. That God does heal. That he does deliver. That he is your refuge. Yes. He is your, your fortress. He is your strong tower. Yes. He is your all in all. That God is your strength. He is your deliverer. You put in the air, in the atmosphere, that seed of life. And begin to speak life in all this death that is going on. The people said, Oh, our God, will you not judge them and look to him? For we have, listen to this, <laughs> we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are on you. Put your eyes back on God. Focus your eyes on God. I'm not telling you to try to deny and ignore what's out there. You don't do that. But what you do is, God, you have to focus now on him like a magnifying glass focuses on a piece of paper and it takes the sun's rays and causes that paper to burn because the focus is so tight yeah. on that paper. That's the kind of focus you need on God. 
They said, our eyes upon you. There's a level of expectation that we have of God. If you're going to not just exist, but if you're going to live in this pandemic, you have to proceed regimented in your faith. Yes. Your faith has to tell you what to do, yes. not your fear. Yes. Your faith has to reign supreme in your life, not your fear. Your faith has to govern what you do because your faith is a, is, is a royal authority from God to be able to speak into your situation and command the situation because you're not commanding it. It's the one that you're standing in that's commanding the situation. Yes. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. We're going to stand here, God. We're going to cry out to you. We're going to call on you. But our eyes are on you. Our eyes are focused and trained on you. Father, we thank you on this day. We thank you, Father, for, for your word. Father, we, 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 we always lean on you because we know you know what you need shared and said and we pray that somebody has been helped and lifted and encouraged, Father, on the word that has gone forth on this day. Father, help us know we must proceed regimented in faith. We, when we proceed, when we go forward, God, we must go forward, Father, knowing that our, knowing that our faith in you is what's going to control us and knowing that our faith in you is what's going to guide us and to give us the authority, God, to speak into our, our conditions and to speak into our situations, God as you would have us to speak. Father, there's somebody listening right now who don't know you in the party of their sin. Father, we pray we take this time now also to call them to you because they can't make it without you in all of this that is going on. And so we pray on the day that we keep our eyes upon you and that we proceed regimented in our faith and that we not allow the fear to get us distracted and to get us off course. We say thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before we leave, I just want to also extend this in, an invitation to those who are outside of the ark of safety. Uh, if you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of his sin, uh, I, I want you to just close your eyes with me and bow and just pray after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I know you to be the Son of God who have died for my sins. I want to receive you. Help me receive you into my heart so that I can be saved. Help me receive you, God, into my heart. Help me receive Jesus Christ into my heart as Lord and Savior so that I can be able to stand regimented in faith so that you can fight my battles for me so that I can run to you. We say thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And all of the people God say it together, amen. 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 Well, thank you for joining us again. Um, just one quick announcement again. One, one more quick, quick announcement for offering. For those of you who are a part of the Zoe and those who want to be a part of the Zoe, please feel free. Um, you can go to Givelify and you can um, share your offering through Givelify. And you can share your offering also uh, through going to our website. Um, com. click on the donate button and that will take you to PayPal as well uh, or if you have your own PayPal account you can also look it up that way also then you can you can come by we will still be here till about 11 30 12 o'clock you can come by and drop off your tithe uh, to the church uh, in person 
Uh, if you want to do it through the week, all you have to do is call the church office to make sure someone is here, and then they will pick your tithes up for, I mean, you can then drop your tithes off to them. So again, you can do it in person, you can do it by Givelify, you can do it by donate, click and donate on our website page. Again, thank you all for joining us on this day. Zoe, remember we're going into the fast now. Um, I'm at 6 p.m., and we're fasting for God's divine intervention in our lives. We're fasting for God's divine intervention in our lives. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, and that we will be able to walk in faith and not fear. Uh, may God bless you. Uh, and let me pray the priestly prayer over you before leaving. God bless you and keep you. Keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And then may he allow you to walk in the peace that he gives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.